Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Type 90B Fuji. This is a currently 11.0 BR premium medium slash main battle tank in the Japanese Ground Forces Tech Tree. This vehicle pack currently costs $69.99 USD and comes with 2,500 Golden Eagles, 20 days of premium time, and of course, the Fuji. With that said, in this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about this tank, including its stats, how it plays, I'll go over its strengths and weaknesses, I'll give it some scores in several key areas areas and then I'll give my final recommendation and if I feel if this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. With that said, if you like this kind of video, please consider subscribing to my channel. But without further ado, let's get into it. Now to start, I'll place the stat card here on the side of the screen. Important things to know are its fire rate, its power to weight ratio, and its cannon elevation angles. Now for how it plays. The Type 90B Fuji, of which I will likely just refer to as the Fuji henceforth, is basically a premium Type 90B clone. It shares all the same features and traits of the Type 90B, but also has an optionally removable camo net that goes around the cannon and the front of the turret. With that said, the Type 90B is a glass cannon through and through. It has an extremely fast reload of 4 seconds thanks to an autoloader, which can tear numerous enemies apart very quickly, or could be used for follow-up shots on a single vehicle. The only issue with this is that, at 11.0 BR, the Fuji features the JM-33 APF SDS shell, which is mediocre compared to the ammunition carried by similar BR tanks, being only able to go through around 480 millimeters of armor at best. While not absolutely terrible, it can cause issues when trying to pen turrets and upper glacis plates of enemy tanks, whereas many other tanks at this BR have well in excess of 500 millimeters of armor pen, sometimes nearing 600 millimeters of armor pen. Of course, in theory, this can be made up for by the incredibly fast reload rate, but it can be a major detriment when the only shots available against a tank are going to be against the toughest areas on that tank. If nothing else, you can flank very easily with this vehicle due to its excellent 30 to 1 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio and 73 km per hour top speed. This excellent mobility when combined with its 4 second reload can turn the Fuji into an incredibly effective flanker. It can easily destroy an entire group of enemies on one side of a map single handedly before they even know that you're there. Unfortunately, however, if enemies do indeed find you, you'll have to contend with the Fuji's mediocre armor which, while decent enough on the front of the turret to stop PDFS, as well as both auto cannons and heavily angled hits from APF-SDS shells, it cannot stop most enemies at this BR that directly hit it with APF-SDS. This armor, or lack thereof, when combined with the three-man crew on the Fuji, is what makes this vehicle into the aforementioned glass cannon, as it can move faster than almost every other MBT in game, and can reload just as quickly, but can barely take hits from the competition. Because of all of these things, the Fuji is best played as a flanker, base capper, support tank, or even a brawler if you're gutsy. Though you won't live for long if you do decide to brawl and you're not lucky. Otherwise, you can theoretically snipe with the Fuji, but its mediocre APF SDS, along with its Gen 1 thermals, not incredible gunner's optics, and its need for speed will make you want to move around the map and shoot enemies quickly. Now with that said, let's get into its strengths and weaknesses, and first for its strengths. The Fuji has an amazing 4 second reload. Second, this vehicle has an excellent powered weight ratio of nearly 30 horsepower per ton, which helps it to accelerate very quickly to its top speed of 73 kilometers per hour, which is also great. For its third strength, the Fuji features blowout panels in the back of the turret to prevent an ammo rack death. Fourth, we have a great reverse speed of 34 km per hour. For its fifth strength, it features a top-mounted HMG that will help in destroying lightly armored vehicles and aircraft. Beyond this, the Fuji has a hydro-pneumatic suspension that allows you to raise and lower the Fuji's height. Beyond this, we also have a laser warning receiver, and finally, we have premium RP and SL bonuses. Now with that said, for its weaknesses, while it does have thermals, they are only Gen 1. This is essentially a detriment at this BR, though as I say, Gen 1 one is better than Gen None. Second, the frontal armor on this vehicle is decent only against Heat FS, but it won't stop all too many APF SDS shells that you'll find around this BR. Further, the lower glacis lacks full composite armor and or ERA, as do the sides of the hull. For its third weakness, the Fuji has limited ammunition options, including the JM-33 APF SDS and JM-12A1 Heat FS, both of which are mediocre at this BR. For its fourth weakness, while not bad, there are many aspects of this vehicle 
people that are very average or even just slightly below average, including the gunner's optics, commander's optics, turret reverse rate, cannon elevation rate, number of smoke grenades, and cannon depression plus elevation. For its fifth weakness, the Fuji only has three crew members, which heavily limits survivability. Sixth, there's a gigantic ammo rack at the rear of the turret, which makes destroying all or most of the ammo on this vehicle at a single time fairly easy. Beyond this, there's a huge turret ring weak spot that is especially pronounced at the front of the tank. For its eighth weakness, the Fuji has a gigantic engine deck that will not allow for cannon depression when putting it against the rear of the tank. Beyond this, while not so much of a weakness as it is a side effect, the reload is so fast that you can easily use large amounts of ammunition quickly, forcing you to either carry a ton of ammunition into a battle with you, or that you'll have to find a capture point in order to reload mid-match. And finally, the commander sight lacks thermals, though at least it has night vision. Now with all that said, let's get into how I score this vehicle. And first, for armament, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. On one hand, the cannon has a ridiculously good reload rate of 4 seconds, thanks to an autoloader that will allow for lightning quick follow-up shots and shots against other enemies. On the other hand, it only has 481 millimeters of armor pen at max with its JM33 APF SDS, and only has a single other type of shell in its JM12A1 heat FS, if you feel like switching things up. Further, the Fuji only has Gen 1 thermals, which complicates things even more. Because of the reload rate alone, I consider this to have great or even excellent armament, but otherwise, it's just not that good on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. You need to know your weak spots when fighting enemies with the Fuji, as you simply do not have enough power to brute force your way through most vehicles with your armament. Though this vehicle will allow you to destroy more enemies more quickly than almost any other vehicle at this BR, again, so long as you're a knowledgeable player. Also, I guess the Fuji gets a fraction of a point for having an HMG, of which will of course help to destroy tracks, lightly armored vehicles, and aircraft. Now, if the Fuji had 510 millimeters plus penning APF SDS and stayed at the same BR as it currently is, I'd probably give the Fuji an 8 out of 10 in this category, but it unfortunately only has mediocre ammunition options. Now, with that said, for mobility, I give it an 8.75 out of 10. With the excellent power to weight ratio of around 30 horsepower per ton, the Fuji is easily one of the most mobile tanks at and around this BR, especially amongst MBTs. Heck, I might even want to give this a 9 out of 10 in this category. The Fuji can easily outspeed pretty much all other tanks at and around this BR, MBT or otherwise. Further, because of its hydro-pneumatic suspension, its height can be adjusted to better traverse off-road or city environments. Also, the Fuji has an excellent reverse speed of 34 kilometers per hour, which allows it to get out of battle quicker than most other tanks. Now for survivability, I give it a 4 out of 10. While not absolutely terrible, the composite armor is both relatively thin at this BR and doesn't cover all too much of the vehicle. Where the composites are, it will typically stop autocannons and some of the weaker APF SDS shells or those that come in at an extreme angle. It will also stop most heat FS shells, but being hit directly by any tank carrying APF SDS that can shoot through over 520 millimeters of armor is typically going to successfully pen the Fuji and of course spell trouble. Now not only that, but the turret sides have negligible composite armor thickness, and the sides of the hull lack composites entirely. Plus, there's a gigantic turret ring weak spot on the front of the tank that meets up with another weak spot just under it, where the composite armor ends on the upper glacis. Further, there's only three crew members, though at least we get somewhat of a bonus score for having blowout panels to save the crew in case of an ammo rack detonation. Lowering the hydro-pneumatic suspension does help a bit with survivability, but of course it doesn't solve the issues surrounding it with this tank. It even has fewer smoke grenades than most tanks. Initially, I was going to rate this a 3 out of 10, but after looking at other MBTs around this BR, such as the Leopard 2PL, I find that the Fuji is a bit more comparable with other tanks than I thought, at least insofar as survivability is concerned, but still lacks any true strong spot that can reliably stop shells from getting through. In all, the Fuji can survive some hits, but it's as close to a glass cannon as you can get at this BR while still being an MBT. Now with that said, overall, I give this a 6 .5 0.75 out of 10. Some people are going to love the Fuji and some people are going to hate it. It isn't incredibly well balanced, heavily favoring fire rate and mobility over survivability and, of course, outright armor pen. Because of that, it is a very difficult vehicle to rate. Initially, I was going to score the armament as a 6.75 out of 10, which would have given me a lower overall score, but ended up with a much more favorable 7.5 out of 10, again, for armament. This is because it took me some time to get used to using its mediocre APF SDS in a way that 
that would maximize its effectiveness. While you can easily kill more enemies with the Type 90 more quickly than with pretty much any other MBT until of course the Type 10, it can also be killed more easily than almost every other MBT as well. How good you find this vehicle will ultimately result from a combination of how well it fits into your playstyle, how skilled you are, and how much experience you have at top tier. For me, that means that the Fuji is a fairly great vehicle, but of course is extremely flawed and is very much hit or miss. Now with all that said, do I recommend purchasing the Fuji? Part of me says I'm being a bit generous with the aforementioned scores, and part of me says that I'm not. Regardless, the Type 90B Fuji is a great vehicle for aggressive players, and a vehicle that won't be fully utilized if you're more of a conservative player in your gameplay style. I think that this vehicle will be more than worth a purchase when it's on sale for most people, as you won't know if you like the extreme swings between great offense and terrible defense with the Fuji until you play it, or if you have experience with the Type 90 in the regular Ground Forces tech tree. I think most people will enjoy the Fuji and will have good success with it as a grinder, but for $69.99 USD, this thing costs a bit much, especially for such an unbalanced vehicle that you can't guarantee will be a good fit for how you play. Now with all that said, thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know what you guys think about the Fuji and of course about this review in the comments below. It was one of the tougher reviews I've had in a while because of how extreme this vehicle is. Either way, thanks again and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.